Gunner is a pretty ludicrous class, arguably the best of them all if your goal is simply to win. His generally agreed upon best builds look something like this. We'll start with a simpler one first. 22213 Hellfire is, simply put, the best self-defense weapon in the game. Just having this weapon in a slot is honestly most of what you need. It shuts down more or less every enemy type with a click or two. That being said, it overwhelmingly specs into crowd clear and control, so pairing it with a strong single target option like 32113 Leadstorm Leadstorm, 21212 Jet Fuel Homebrew, or 11212 Plasma Burster Missiles is generally the way to go. The other option is a largely inverted build structure. 23321 Volatile Bullets is, simply put, the best single target DPS in the game. Paired with some form of Burning Hell, some of the best ignition in the game while being no slouch and crowd clear and self defense either, and you have a flexible and incredibly potent build. Just don't take it into dreads. You can alternatively take 31222 Mindler System or 22322 Neurotoxin Payload, paired with any single target secondary. Or just Hellfire and Leadbursters for what is likely the single most survivable build in the game, especially in solo. Now that we've established the best builds, let's take a look at why they're so good and see if we can use the insight we gain from that to craft some more varied options. Gunner has some ridiculous overclocks. Gunner's secondary slot has Volta Bullets and Hellfire. His primary slot has Mind Layer and NTP. Ideally, you'd take Volta Bullets with Hellfire or Mind Layer or NTP to combine the best single target with the best crowd clear, but unfortunately, or perhaps fortunately for the game's balance, Hellfire shares the secondary slot and the other two weapons aren't geared for ignition. But I think this highlights a pretty vital build philosophy. Generally, the best builds come together when you take two weapons that do two different things well and combine them to do most things well. This is a pretty good general build heuristic for Gunner and NG. Think explosive chemical rounds with overdrive booster or executioner with volatile impact reactor. And we can use it to mix and match primaries and secondaries to craft generally well-rounded builds. In the case of Burning Hell and Volatile Bullets, you're comboing a pretty strong Crackler and Ignition primary with an incredibly strong single target secondary for a build that deals with crowds decently well and completely destroys large single targets. But you could just as easily swap that Burning Hell minigun out for, say, 31221 Fragmentation Missiles and end up with a build that has slightly different, likely lesser performance, but generally functions in a similar way. That being said, this sort of fast and loose rule of thumb is not universally applicable. Some builds, as is the case with Mind Layer or NTP with Hellfire, completely overload on one specific aspect and are so good at stacking slows, stuns, fears, and chip damage that they somehow manage to deal with tanky enemies outside of the occasional lead burster for bulks. This is usually much easier to accomplish with Crackler, which typically grants more personal safety, but the inverse can also be true. In some team compositions, and against some difficulties, LSLS with VB might be the right set of weapons for the job. It's up to you, as a player, to decide when and why these exceptions might pop up for yourself. Gunner's equipment configuration generally stays constant across all builds, as it's mostly a matter of personal preference. The zipline can really be built however you prefer. I personally think placement angle is the most generally useful of the Dear One mods. Tier 3 fall damage reduction is small and unimportant, or it would be if it wasn't bugged to permanently give you the buff. Either way, it's neither relevant enough nor legitimate feeling enough for me to take, so I opt for zip move speed. The general wisdom with shields is, in a team, take at least one duration mod and at least one radius mod. Too short and you spend your entire time in the shield reviving. Too small and you start creating head bouncing issues and getting bitten through the edges. 223 is my preferred configuration in team play, though 221 is also fine. I take 123 in true solo since the extra space isn't much needed there. Grenades are another part of the equation worth considering. Gunnar's first three grenades accomplish very similar things. Incendiaries are good for sustained crowd clear and instant ignition for volatile bullets. Cluster grenades are very good burst crowd clear and instant sun for general safety. Sticky nades are crowd clear. You may take one of these with the aforementioned LSLS plus VB build. Incendiary if you often find yourself overwhelmed by normal guns or stormers, or if you feel you lack expedient ignition. Clusters if you would like more flexibility in dealing with mixed swarms. Stickies if you are quirky. No offense. Leadbursters provide a strong, if expensive, way of quickly dispatching denser Mycteris swarms, stationaries, and especially bulks. If you find yourself often struggling with these, it might be good to incorporate Leadbursters into your build. Be careful of friendly fire, though. With that out of the way, we'll spend the bulk of the rest of the video discussing various common options and standard builds categorize them as we go, and see if we can't mash them together. 
the overclock graphics will generally display the strongest options at the top and the weakest at the bottom. Starting with the minigun, the weapon's overclocks build very similarly due to most of them being stat changers. I'd consider all these overclocks to be in the same vein as no overclock, with the same strengths and same mod setups to varying degrees. Minigun has good performance across most ranges and decent to great single target DPS depending on the build. The stun means you get passable safety too, aside from Leadstorm. Most minigun builds with these overclocks will go something like 3-2-XX-3. Tier 3 probably affects how you play the gun more. Armor break is good if you want to go all into single target. It makes you better against a variety of singular enemies. Blowthrough is still pretty good at that, marginally less so for some enemies and significantly less so for stuff like shellbacks. In exchange, you get some usability as crowd clear. Good if you don't trust your secondary or teammates to keep you completely safe. Stun is a potent mod, except for on LSLS, but with these types of builds you tend to focus fire, so the base gun stun is usually good enough. In tier 4, your choice is basically just between variable chamber pressure and faster spin-up. I generally think faster spin-up is the better option due to the extra safety and responsiveness it grants, especially for exhaust vectoring to compensate for the extra time to get accurate. Variable chamber pressure is still generally good if you prefer, and is especially strong on Lundstorm due to being a percentage boost, and a little more oomph due to its granting spin-up time by default. We'll lump these builds into two groups for the sake of convenience. Armor Break Minigun, which is mostly a pretty decent single target DPS option, and Blowthrow Minigun, which is also heavily single target focused, but can function as high cost crowd clear in both attention and ammo. Next we have the two BHs, Bullet Hell and Burning Hell. Burning Hell is a very flexible ignition, crowd clear, and self defense option. Take X222X. Burning Hell sacrifices a sustained DPS, you won't often be unloading into Praetorians for example, or you'll overheat, in exchange for strong ignition in the area in front of you as well as activating the potent tier 5 mods, aggressive venting, and hot bullets more easily. Stun and spin up are particularly good here, because burning enemies faster and stunning them is generally much more productive than going for a raw single target DPS on the server block. Instead, the build variety comes from tiers 1 and 5. We'll talk about the more transformative tier first, tier 5. Hot Bullets is a particularly compelling option. You hit the 50% heat threshold faster since you heat up faster. It's also extremely good at igniting enemies for volatile bullets, which Burning Hell is amazing to combo with. Aggressive Venting, on the other hand, is easily spammable due to that same heat quote unquote downside, and grants incredible crowd clear and safety into higher enemy densities. Tier 1 cooling can be a good option if you take tier 5 hot bullets and would like to shoot at enemies a lot, but it's not very necessary if you have a good driller or strong movement relative to your difficulty. Nonetheless, it can be a very comfortable pick for safety. Accuracy is much better on aggressive venting and generally good with hot bullets too, as you get much more consistent ignition uptime compared to cooling. Overall, Burning Hell is a strong self-defense and crowd clear oriented weapon with some small single target utility and an extremely potent synergy with volatile bullets. Bullet Hell serves a pretty similar role, pick it with 322XX. Tier 4 variable chamber pressure can help make up for the damage downside, and though I personally prefer a faster spin up, there are great players who don't. Tier 5 is mostly dependent on whether you have volatile bullets and how much crowd clear you actually need. In lower bug densities or with a good team, hot bullets tends to be preferable. Aggressive venting, on the other hand, serves as pretty impressive amounts of crowd clear, with your opponent stunned bunching enemies up near you each vent sending them to hell, fleeing and burning. Bullet Hell is probably the most defensive of the minigun's overclocks, sacrificing a good amount of killing power for the ability to stunlock every enemy in front of you. It leans towards being pretty strong crowd control more than anything, and is a uniquely effective form of safety against high value targets like Mactera and Spitters. The autocannon, luckily for my video link, is a far less interesting weapon. More or less every overclock is built something like X2122, with the first tier depending on your priorities, playstyle, and overclock, though I do personally always prefer a mag size. Carpet Bomber probably takes tier 3 AoE damage. Neurotoxin Payload probably takes tier 3 damage. Big Bertha probably takes tier 4 armor break. If you want, you can run tier 5A feedback loop, but only do that if you don't often have trouble surviving and you don't often get chunked by Praetorian spit. Autocannon is a pretty mediocre crowd clear weapon with decent crowd control with tier 5 fear. This is true for everything except Big Bertha and NTP. Big Bertha is a significantly stronger generalist weapon with a single target lean, while NTP is ungodly crowd clear and control. We'll split this weapon into those, the Autocannon, Big Bertha, and NTP. Hurricane is the third option in the slot. 
At base, or with any of these relatively analogous to base overclocks, it's a great crag and control option that also deals with ranged enemies acceptably well. Typically, you'd build it with 3-1-2-1-2. With Vault of Bullets, picking tier 5 Napalm and tier 4 AoE damage might be more your style, though it is worth noting that this is generally a weaker option than Burning Hell. With Overclocked Firing Mechanism or Rocket Barrage, tier 3 mag size is probably the better choice. You might also consider taking tier 4 AoE on Rocket Barrage, depending on your priorities. I typically haven't really explained my build choices in this video to save time, but I have ghostwritten a post on the excellent r slash technical DRG if you'd like more insight into my build choices here, which will be linked in the description. We'll generally lump all of these together into one AoE hurricane bundle. It's not terrible single target, but that's just not its main strength. I think Mind Layer deserves a special mention here for its power. It doesn't have any real downside. Minus 36 ammo is not very impactful, nor is the loss of targeting. It's also built more or less like the others, with 31222. However, it's on a level of its own when it comes to self-defense and crack their capabilities. I don't know who thought that making this thing nearly triple your AoE damage with negligible downsides would be a good idea. It's such an absurd boost to your effectiveness that your single target DPS genuinely rivals that of LSLS, on one times weak points with no explosive resist at least. The mine's arm time and pre-placement also means you cover your own reloads. It's pretty crazy. Mine Lair is extremely strong, among the top 3 best overclocks in the game, probably. For the functions of this video, I'll throw it in with the rest, but that's just something to keep in mind. The other two options the Hurricane has are mostly single target focused. We'll start with the simpler of the two. Jet Fuel Homebrew runs 22212, the reasons for which should be self explanatory. Tier 2 Armor Break is a pretty weak mod due to how projectiles interact with Armor Break, but velocity is off putting for me personally and can feel worse than nothing. If this isn't the case for you, feel free to swap that around. Jetfuel Homebrew is a strong alternative to LSLS. It trades sustainability, ignition, and some flexibility for higher on-demand weak point DPS and a pretty strong stun effect. It's easier to use and quite potent nonetheless. It does throw all your eggs into the single target basket, though. Plasma Burster missiles, after the recent buff, are very interesting. Build them with X1212, with either ammo or damage in tier 1, though ammo is likely the better option. Each missile has pretty insanely high damage potential, but individually deal it quite slowly. Control how many missiles are in the air at any given time, and you end up with pretty ludicrous peak possible PPS. It's surprisingly flexible despite that potency. PBM deals with more or less all enemies, aside from Stormers, decently well. Its main drawback is the attention cost. To use this overclock at its maximum potential, you have to control your crosshair in pretty specific manners, so distractions, be they mental or physical, can drop your performance pretty low. That being said, in most situations, PBM is a pretty great generalist pick with a lean towards single targets and flying enemies, which are typically the most worthwhile to spend your attention on and simultaneously the easiest to get PBM value out of. The Bulldog has a wide range of single target-ish overclocks and one AoE. These overclocks occupy a range from high value target to large single target killing niches. Chain Hit is maybe debatable as an AoE overclock, but it's not a great one if it is. Generally, you want to build the Bulldog with 2x, 3x, 1, with the 2nd and 4th years shifting depending on your overclock. With no overclock, or the overclocks that don't shift your damage, I think 2 2 3 one, one is a good option. With Homebrew, you might take 1 or 2 damage mods to avoid missing key breakpoints, depending on how much you value consistently one-shotting Mactera spawn. With Volatile Bullets, you should probably take 1 damage mod for a bunch of breakpoints, though, again, the most immediately obvious is likely one-shotting Mactera spawn. Elephant Rounds probably takes 1 damage mod, again, for a variety of breakpoints. It probably also takes tier 5 Neurotoxin for, again, more breakpoints. The tier 5 mod is generally a fine way to get a bit of extra damage, but it particularly benefits Elephant Rounds and is uniquely suited to it, since Elephant Rounds tends to pace shots more than others, thus needing dead eye less. Tier 5 Neurotoxin is, in general, a fine pick, even on other builds, and though I don't prefer it, some great players do. All these breakpoints are detailed in another r slash technical DRG post, again linked in the description. Vaguely, this list of overclocks goes from a spectrum of decent high value target killers to also being pretty good single target damage dealers, though the only truly great single target, volatile bullets, blocks your primary slot. So we'll separate it vaguely in that way. Homebrew powder blurs the line, but we'll lump it in with single target damage dealers, since it's usually fine enough at it. The other option for the Bulldog is Magic Bullets. Run this with 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, and shoot out at the ground near bugs for a fun, though not incredibly strong, AoE secondary. 
This tends to fall off with higher bug density, speed, and especially veteran count, but is an enjoyable crowd clear option nonetheless. The Bird 7 is, coincidentally, much of the same. All its options, but one, are at their best when used for unloading into single targets. Usually, you run this with 232x2 to support that concept. In Tier 4, ammo and weak point are both decent options, though the Burt is one of the rare cases where I do prefer ammo over damage, aside from with compact bags. Experimental rounds might benefit from Tier 3 magazine, but in general the Burt is built very uniformly. Tier 5 stun is an acceptable, if occasionally finicky, option to make your gun less focused on unloading into large targets and easier to control the ammo use of, but I generally prefer the 6 round bursts. These are all pretty fine options, aside from micro flechettes, that lean heavily into single target, especially lead spray and experimental rounds, which are quite strong in their niche. The token AoE option for the Burt is Electro Mindlets. Build it with 3212x for a build that's exceptionally capable at crowd controlling ground enemies at any enemy density. Its tier 5 mod is mostly preference. I prefer 6 round bursts, but it can be harder to get value out of 6 rounds without some practice. This overclock is a relatively strong option for dealing with grunts, swarmers, and helping with Praetorians, but is also somewhat outclassed by the last gunner weapon. The Quo Gun. The likely optimal build for every variant of the weapon in most scenarios is X22X3. Tier 4 doesn't really matter. I prefer damage resist most of the time, though shockwaves do synergize with triple tech chambers. In tier 1, charge speed and ammo are both good options. I tend to prefer charge speed on everything but Hellfire myself. At top level play, this weapon has undergone a pretty drastic shift in opinion over the last couple months. People used to think it was pretty bad outside of Hellfire, but it's demonstrated extreme self-defense capabilities, especially with the absurdly powerful tier 3 mod, has swayed many opinions, especially in the realm of solo. It's not the absolute best for killing power outside of Hellfire, but it's still pretty good at cleaning up smaller enemies and controlling the bigger ones. The mole is uniquely decent at killing tankier enemies, though only situationally. The Quail Gun is overall a strong self-defense tool and crowd control option, and becomes pretty exceptional with the Hellfire Overclock especially. Okay, with that over with, it's time to mash some of these together and evaluate how and why these builds might work, starting with the two from the very beginning of the video. We'll make use of the chart to aid us. Generally, pairing any two options from two different categories will result in a decent build. Typically, the further away from each other, the better. Pairing blow-through minigun with high-value target bulldog, for example, is an upwards battle in grunt clear, while blow-through minigun with coil gun is strong. But this chart is obviously a heavy abstraction that omits a significant amount of information. Use your own good judgement and experience to evaluate each build's effectiveness for yourself. We'll start with Burning Hell plus VB. Burning Hell provides strong ignition, good safety, and decent crack clear. Volatile Bullets, in turn, absolutely deletes single targets from the face of Hoxies. One shot to kill Spitballer, Goobupper, Menace, and so on. The main weakness of this build, I'd say, is that Burning Hell is not that exceptional of a self-defense tool. You can get sometimes overwhelmed and pushed around by denser grunt packs, if you're not taking aggressive venting, but if you do take aggressive venting, you're missing out on a lot of ignition power from hot bullets. You might be inclined to take clusters to patch up this build's weaknesses. Vault of Bloods is also completely overkill in solo and can feel fairly weak. That being said, the potency of enabling volatile bullets should not be underestimated, especially in team games. We reverse the roles with LSLS and Hellfire. Hellfire provides insane crud clear and safety, which compensates for Lidstorm Lidstorm's inherent lack of it. LSLS's great single target DPS kills the enemies that don't die from repeated Hellfire spam. This build is probably one of the strongest generalist loadouts that Gunner has. I like taking lead bursters with it for helping to deal with stationaries and bulks more safely, which is one of the weaker points of the build, but any grenade would work given how well-rounded the loadout is inherently. Now let's make variations. Instead of LSLS plus Hellfire as our single target and AoE weapons, why not swap the primary for Jet Fuel Homebrew? Just as functional. Hellfire is pretty boring though, how do we replace it? Well, Jet Fuel Homebrew's advantages over LSLS are that it provides more mobility and safety, so we don't need the secondary slot to pick up as much slack. Maybe we can take Magic Bullets then. Our primary is well suited to cover its weaknesses, after all. JFH is pretty good against Magterra and Menaces while providing stopping power against tankier targets, all weak points of Magic Bullets. This build is certainly much weaker than the previous iteration, but it's a fresh new variant. Or. How about instead of JFH plus Magic Bullets, we use Big Bertha and Electro Mindlets. This build has a much more glaring Mactera weakness, and Big Bertha is less specialized in a single target, so maybe you take Lead Bursters to counteract that. Or 
Maybe we take plasma burster missiles with the mole, comboing the safety and low effort crowd clear of the coil gun with the high attention cost powerful single target of plasma burster missiles. It's all about balance. Now let's flip the script. Maybe, instead of burning hell with all the bullets, we take bullet hello and lead spray, leveraging our greater stun and safety to fit in the longer bird bursts. Maybe we even take lead bursters for that, both for some sort of thematic gratification and for supplemental stationary and bulk killing power. This build is one of the most popular options in modern cryo comps, actually. Maybe you don't like the feel of the minigun, though, and would prefer something like Frag Missile's Hurricane, which is generally much more ammo efficient while killing. Perhaps that ammo efficiency lets you pick up experimental rounds in your secondary slot, granting you better effectiveness at range. Maybe you don't like the feel of killing the enemies, though, and would like to play with Carpet Bomber. Sorry, I had to. You might pair it with something like Six Shooter, which specializes in more ranged enemies to complement Carpet Bomber's hyper focus on ground enemies. You'd certainly also want to take lead bursters to supplement your mediocre single target. At this point, you get the point. Again, this isn't an end all be all method of build making. You might, for example, want to double up on single target weapons for dread missions on lower difficulties or with less coordinated teams. You can do things and get away with things depending on your playstyle and especially your team composition. For example, Burning Hell VB is better with a flamethrower driller and worse with cryo. VB is less important for clearing stationaries if your scout has cryo bolts. An executioner and breach cutter engineer might reduce your need for a weapon to deal with Mactera. So on and so forth. There is far more depth to build making and especially comp making than I could really have ever laid out here, but I hope I've at least given you a good head start. If you appreciated this video, I would appreciate a like, and a subscribe if possible. Also, let me know how you felt about this more editing heavy and less gameplay focused style of video, it's something I'm trying out for the first time. I've also been considering making a discord, I feel I've imposed on others administrative powers for long enough. As always, don't let me or my opinion prevent you from using what you find fun. Happy mining out there. Rock and stone.